Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. Hope you are having a fantastic week. Today we are starting a new series. This is episode one of my new series called Revamp. You better know I chose the name Revamp because it has the word vamp in it, but it's vampire and I like vampires. <coughs> I digress. Vampire. If you look in our handy dandy dictionary, revamp means Give new and improved form, structure, or appearance to. And that's what we're doing in this series. Now, it's different than my Ghostly Haunt series because that was a DIY tutorial series. And this is no tutorial. It's just me trying to see um, if I can turn ordinary things into extraordinarily gothic-y looking things. <laughs> Today, in episode one, we are going to be... Revamping. So I got this bird feeder last year from Lowe's and I thought it already had a super awesome base to it. It does look like a gothic cathedral to me. It just needs some more pizzazz, more flying buttresses, gargoyles, other words I forgot from my art history class to make things a gothic key looking cathedral. So for this, I have some design inspiration for what I want to do with it. I'm taking inspiration from the Little Ivy Chapel in Denver, Colorado, as well as Chichester. Chai 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 Chichester. I'm also taking design inspiration from Chichester Cathedral, as well as Gloucester Cathedral. Those are my inspirations for how I want to revamp this uh this uh, bird feeder now i am planning on putting this outside so a lot of the things i'm using are for outdoor use however if you do want to make this and want to keep it inside you probably have a lot easier time than i will <laughs> when i'm making this also i don't plan on putting bird food in here because i don't want any birds to get sick i don't think they would but just in case since i'm putting glue and stuff and paint on this i I'm not going to put any bird food on it, but I'm still going to put it outside and squirrels or birds can still sit on it or climb on it. So since this is my first episode of my revamp series, bear with me as I try and figure out camera angles. I only have one camera at the moment, so we're going to try and figure out how to do this in an effective manner. So let's um, begin with what items I'm going to be using to revamp my bird feeder. I may or may not use all of these things and I also may find new things to use but I'll show you what I have by me as of right now for things I think I might use. So the hot glue gun, hot glue sticks. I got E6000 glue for items on the outside of it so that way when it rains hopefully they will stay on better than if I just use hot glue gun, hot glue sticks. Then I have like little objects to put on it. So I have this picture frame and then some gargoyles and I'll insert a better clip of them. Decorate the outside of them with. Then I got some outdoor paint. I got this from Joann's. It's outdoor acrylic paint and I got it in different colors. This is like a tan color, a metallic purple, a black, a metallic pink, and a metallic blue. Got some red rhinestones. I got this origami paper. So I plan on using this to make stained glass on the glass part of the uh, bird feeder. Then I have these uh, bur bath, bur tiles. bath tiles that I got from Lowe's. Need some scissors. I can find my actual scissors, so I have just my hair scissors right now. And paint brushes. So I think. Uh, I won't need anything besides those. So let's get started on how to transform or revamp this boring bird feeder to a gothic masterpiece. So right now I have my camera on autofocus, so I apologize for the constant focusing, but I don't know how else to do it right now. So we're, this is a learning curve for all of us. So the first thing I think I want to get out of the way is E6000 these little stones that came off of this 
giant slab. Since E6000 glue takes up to 72 hours to fully bond to an object, um, I'm going to glue these on and then wait a few hours because normally it sticks pretty well. It's just you want to be pretty careful. Um, so that's what I'm going to do first and then we'll get going from there. So for me, since I'm not actually going to put birdseed in this, I don't have to really worry about the weight of how heavy this bird feeder will get. But if you are going to be using this bird feeder with the actual bird seed in it, I would be a little wary of how, how much stuff you stick onto it since it might not support the weight of the bird seed and all the extra stuff you're going to be putting onto it. So I'm going to try and figure out how I want to lay these guys on it. And then I took one of these frames that I got from Michael's a while ago and I broke it apart like this. Do, 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 do. And I'm going to be using it to put it on like that, or maybe using these side ones to make like a little buttress, kind of like how that looks. So we're just going to try and figure out how I want to lay this out. Just to make things a little easier, I went ahead and peeled off all of those little stones and I kind of try to sort them from smallest to medium to the biggest, so that way I could try and uh, Tetris them onto the side of the bird feeder. So let's try and arrange that on there. Okay, now that I've E6000 all of these little stones onto my bird feeder, now it's just the babysitting game to make sure that um, they don't move too much on you. Because right now we have some free time, I figured I would work on these stained glass on the windows, so I already test drove this other side to see if I could get the glass out, and I could. So while we're waiting for these to set, before I can flip it onto the other side, I figured we would work on these stained glass together. Let's change these angles up. Hello. So I'm not gonna lie, it's pretty hard to film this with only one camera and no help from anyone else, uh, but we're, we're, I'm, 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 I'm going, I'm dealing with it. So like I had mentioned, I got, I got this glass out of the bird feeder and I just did that by folding back the tabs that are holding it down and then you just kind of have to turn it sideways and pull it out. I don't really know how to best film that, but it's pretty easy. There's only four tabs holding it in, so it's not too difficult. And now I'm just going to try and figure out how I want to lay out all my uh, plastic pieces of paper. And I got this off of an Etsy store. Actually, they're located in Colorado. Woo woo. Shout out to Colorado. Um, so I'm just going to try and figure out how I want to lay these plastic pieces of origami paper onto uh, my stained glass. So I'm going to try and just fiddle and lay them out first, and then once I like it, I'll glue them down. But we're going to hold off on doing that part because i got to figure out how I want to look, how the stained glass look. So let's go ahead and cut up some pieces and figure out how I want this to be laid on my glass. This origami paper pack came with a couple different colors. It came with red, yellow, purple, a dark blue, like a teal blue, green, pink, and then like a lighter purple. So let's see here. I do want mine to be symmetrical, kind of like you see on this picture. So that's kind of what I'm envisioning.
Well, hello there. Here's a little update on how the stained glass windows are going. So, I noticed that a lot of stained glass has black in the middle of the colors. So I ended up grabbing some black construction paper. Here it is. And I ended up taking it and then cutting around the glass in order to make it fit perfectly around it. And then I was test running one of them because I didn't want to do it on camera and then have it not turn out. But I ended up cutting it, kind of like how you would a snowflake, and I made little uh, shapes in it that I thought looked kind of similar to what you would see in an actual cathedral based off pictures I found online. So this is what it looks like, and I'm just going to do the same thing I did with this one onto this one. So I'll show you on the one I already cut out since that seems easier. So taking the paper like this, I folded it in half, folded the top down to create the top part, and uh, I cut out here and I cut out here. And so when I fold it back out, you can see it creates kind of like a cross looking shape. And it's something similar here, but you can see it's not as perfect as up here. In order to get those symmetrical, I folded the sides in half and then I folded it in half again. So you can see these corners are here and then I cut that cross looking shape on this side and then I cut like the little point shape here so that way when you unfold it both these sides are symmetrical and then I folded this in half again but not obviously I don't need this folded down but I folded this in half in order to create that point here so now we have this so now I'm just going to try and recreate this onto this one so that way both sides of the birdhouse will be symmetrical and then I'm going to take the little clear shapes that I cut out and I'm going to put them inside the cutouts kind of like this so that way the light shines so you can see all the different colors. So I'm going to try and assemble all of these together, finish cutting this one out, and then I'm going to flip the bird feeder on the other side because I think these have hardened enough the E6000 was hard enough on the side that we have done together. I can flip it around to the other side. And then I'm ready to move forward to the next steps with this bird feeder. So I'll be back once I finish these and then I'll show you how they turned out. All right, finally, I think it's update time. It's been about two hours since I last checked in with you guys, but I finally finished putting a little stained glass on the back of these black construction paper. So that's the front, here's the back. So how I'm going to make sure that this doesn't get ruined outside is I'm going to put packing tape over the top of the paper on all sides. Hopefully that seals it in and it makes it waterproof. It's going to be a little annoying to have the tape lines. Like you know like when tape overlaps, you can kind of see it. So I'm gonna try and make it so the tape that overlaps is right here. Wish me luck on that. <laughs> uh, and then I have glued down the rocks on the other side of the bird feeder. And I also glued the little gargoyle right here onto the top of the bird feeder just to try and save some time. I still have to glue on some other pieces like this other gargoyle and the frame that I broke apart, but that has to be on the front of the bird feeder, so I have to wait for that. But otherwise, I think that'll be all of the gluing that we need to do, unless I decide to also glue on like these red jewels or something. That's my check-in. I'm gonna go tape these with the packing tape, and hopefully that works out okay. I'm gonna insert this once I get it all packaged up back into here and then uh, we'll move forward with our gothic bird feeder together. All right, check-in time. So I'm gonna swivel this around so you can see what I've done and uh, we'll continue forward. So here I put in the stained glass windows. Unfortunately, I didn't quite align these two sides correctly so you only see the middle one but actually don't mind that it just would be nicer if there was more color in these two panels but 
I don't feel like redoing it. It looks fine enough to me where I feel like it's not going to bother me to leave it this way. And then these pieces right here and right here have not been glued on. And I'm also adding these on as well. Uh, so that's what the front is looking like. Then we'll turn her or him to the side. So here is how this side looks. I really do like how the stone adds a lot of character and texture to the bird feeder. I think it makes it look a lot more dynamic and will make it look a lot better when we paint it because if we had just left it without this on it, it would have looked pretty flat. Then here's this side. This side will be the back, obviously. It looks, the stained glass looks the same as the front. I tried to make them look pretty symmetrical. I'm honestly excited to see what this looks like when the sun hits it. Here is the other side with the stones glued on. And now we're back to the front. So I'm going to go ahead and glue the gargoyle, these two buttresses that I put on. And then I'm also going to go ahead and glue this up here. And then this other piece on the back to get the, the back a little bit of something. I'll tune back in once uh, those are glued down and dry enough for us to continue marching on. It's been it's been a day and there's a big pile of paper cutouts all around me. So I guess I can clean that up while I'm waiting for these things to dry. Be productive. Use your time wisely. Yes, Rachel. Do it. Yeah. Welcome back. It's been about an hour and a half since I glued down my buttresses. Yummy! And uh, these little other decorations that I put on as well, as well as the gargoyle, they feel sturdy to me. Like if I touch them, they're not going to fall off. So I think we're ready to move on to the next step, which is painting this guy. This is the final step. So hoorah. <laughs> Made it. So for paint on this cathedral, I think I'm going to paint the um, cathedral part black and then add some sort of secondary tone to it so that way it's not just flat black and then all the details kind of get sunken in because when things are black you really can't see details. Then as for the roof, um, I'm inspired by copper sheet roofing. I've noticed a lot of cathedrals have that copper sheet roofing. And so I want to kind of emulate that on the roof here and the roof here. Let's go ahead and get painting and see what this looks like after the paint is applied and has dried and see if there's anything else we need to add or if it'll be project complete. Well, hello there. I started painting this and I'm just done for the day. I might have did probably because I've been sniffing E6000 glue and now this paint all day. So I think I should go give myself a break and I'll come back to this tomorrow. To uh, tell you what I did, I did the first coat of black. It needs more coats because this is too smooth for the paint to adhere to. You notice that the roof is not green like I had intended. It is um, purple because I realized I don't have a green color and I only have a blue, but no yellow, so no green. Uh, this is just the base coat though, so if I decide to be productive and go to Michael's, I might either buy a yellow or a green outdoor paint to cover that with, but I might not, and I might just leave it purple. I don't think it looks terrible, just not what I intended when I wanted to make a uh, green copper roof. <laughs> I also am planning on finishing the bottom to be the same color as the roof. Could be purple, could be that green color, but as of right now it's purple. And then I'm also planning on doing the purple on the cathedral windows or whatever color I decide to make the roof. That'll be the trim around the windows, just to tie everything in together. But other than that, I think I got quite a bit accomplished today. It's just now the tedious painting of it. So say goodbye to today, Rachel, and hello to tomorrow, Rachel. Tomorrow, Rachel, take it away. Hello, tomorrow, Rachel here, which is now today, Rachel. So we're gonna continue painting this uh, cathedral of mine. 
So I'm just gonna keep winging it, and if I don't like the black and purple combo, then I'm gonna try something else. And I did not go to Michael's to get uh, yellow paint, yellow outdoor paint. So I either might try and mix my yellow paint that's not an outdoor paint if I really feel the need to have the green roof. But like I said, um, I'm just gonna keep painting along and see where I end up. So I probably won't film much of me painting, but I'll probably film a teeny bit of it and also check in if I do end up changing my color scheme or maybe I'll make it a surprise. I don't know yet. Like I said, winging it like a bat or a vampire. Also, I think I want to add in some gray into this guy, hence why my gray lipstick eye combo feeling inspired by the gray today. All right, you guys, are you ready for the big reveal of my bird feeder? Cue epic montage. Alright you guys, I'm finally done with my bird feeder, so here concludes episode uno of my revamp series. If you guys have any suggestions for future revamp videos, let me know. Also, if you have any recommendations for camera angles, uh, improvements, if something was a little off in this video, or if you think I should be including more time lapses, less time lapses, uh, more explanations. Any suggestions are welcome here. Nonetheless, I hope you guys enjoyed seeing how I transformed my bird feeder into a very nice, or hopefully nice, <laughs> gothic looking cathedral. Eventually, I will be putting my little gothic cathedral outside to be used as an actual like bird perch or squirrel perch. But unfortunately, the paint that I used being the outdoor acrylic paint, According to the bottle, it takes 48 hours to fully cure, so I'm not gonna test that out by prematurely putting this outside. I'm probably gonna wait a couple of days when I know it's fully set before I put it out there. So unfortunately, you won't see that in this video, but I will make sure to try and put up a Instagram post of how this looks outside because honestly, I think it's gonna look really, really cool. I also made sure to double check. You can still get this bird feeder at Lowe's. So if you guys are also interested in coming up with your own gothic -y cathedral, you are able to at your local Lowe's store. <laughs> One downside I realized too what I did with my bird feeder is um, gluing down the arches, buttresses onto it so I can't actually open up the lid, which in my opinion, this would look really cool hanging outside with like a tea light in it. Um, an, a fake one, a battery powered one, not a real tea light. I don't think that's a really good idea to put a real flame inside a, a, a metal box like that. <laughs> I think that's all I have for you guys on this very first episode. So until next time, I hope you have an awesome and spooky week and I'll see you in my next video. Bye.